This is Truth Time Radio. Welcome into another Truth Time transmission as we look into Old Covenant, New Covenant, or something else. If I had to give this program a title, that would be it. Old Covenant, New Covenant, or something else. You see, many have failed to realize that there are more than two things, old and new, going on in our Bible. In Ephesians chapter 2, in verses 2, 7, and 13, look it up for yourself, here we see three timelines, three timelines. There is time past, ages to come, but now. Those three phrases Paul uses in Ephesians chapter 2 to describe timelines, time past, ages to come, but now. Israel's new covenant is what's spoken of in the book of Hebrews, and the book of Hebrews is about, it's about ages to come for God's time past people, and is why we read in Hebrews 2, verse 5, for unto the angels hath he put in subjection the world to come, whereof we speak. The world to come, whereof we speak. What was the writer of Hebrews writing about? Quote, the world to come, whereof we speak. That was the purpose of the book. And look at Hebrews chapter 6 verse 5. And have tasted the good word of God and the powers of, and there's those four words again, the world to come. Not the present world we're in now. No, the book of Hebrews is about the world to come. And the world to come that's being spoken of in the book of Hebrews is the same world to come Christ prophesied of in Matthew 12.32 and Mark 10.30. The book of Hebrews is about Israel's new covenant in prophecy and not our fellowship of the mystery. One is prophecy, one is mystery. Clearly, they're not the same. You see, under covenant, Israel received God's blessings by obeying the law. Look at Exodus, Exodus chapter 24, verse 12. And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up to me into the mount, and be there, and I will give thee tables of stone, and a law, and commandments which I have written, that thou mayest teach them. And Deuteronomy 28, verses 1 and 2, And it shall come to pass, if if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. This is obviously Israel. However, under grace, we, the church, the body of Christ, not Israel, we're a separate entity, under grace, we receive God's blessings totally apart from the law. Romans 6.14, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Amen? Romans seven six. look at this one, But now we are delivered from the law. Did you hear that, saints? We are delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. Galatians 2.16 People quote it, but do they believe it? They know it, but do they trust it? A man is not justified. Listen, Galatians 2.16 A man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law, now now listen, here it comes, you so-called law keepers, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. 
Galatians 5, 4, Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. You see, according to God, who did the old covenant belong to? Exodus 6, 5, it belonged to the, quote, children of Israel, whom the Egyptians kept in bondage, and I have remembered my covenant. The old covenant was made with the children of Israel for the purpose of setting them apart as a holy, peculiar nation to be God's mediator to all nations. And is why, as as we read a moment ago, Deuteronomy 28, 1, The Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Now, a, a, a natural question one might ask is, Okay, if the old covenant was for Israel, who will the new covenant belong to? Let us again go to the scriptures. Let's go to God, not man, to get our answer. Jeremiah thirty-one, thirty-one. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant. Now, saints, listen. Today we're talking about old covenant, new covenant, or something else. Listen. The Lord said, I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. You and I are in neither house. There is no house of Israel in the body of Christ and no body of Christ in the house of Israel. Furthermore, Jeremiah was a prophet of Israel, Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 4, and not of the body of Christ. There was no such thing as the body of Christ church during the days of Jeremiah. You could have mentioned the body of Christ church to Jeremiah and he would have no idea what you were talking about. The church which is his body is a new creature and wasn't formed until after the finished cross work when Paul was called out to be an apostle. Now back to Jeremiah chapter uh, 31. So the Lord said, I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. And in verse 33, now check that out. In verse 33, he said, this is important. Notice, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. You're not there. You're nowhere to be found. Just who do you know that has the law in their inward parts and written in their hearts? Listen, if this described us, we would never walk where we shouldn't walk, we would never say what we shouldn't say, and never do what we shouldn't do. And if that sounds like perfection, it's because it is. The new covenant is for Israel, and is precisely why John told them, Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. 1 John 3, 6. Drop down a couple of verses. He that committeth sin is of the devil. And keep reading. Next verse. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. Are you getting this? John could honestly say this because during Israel's new covenant, after they get their sins blotted out, Acts chapter 3, verse 21, and are born again, 1 Peter 1, 23, God is going to write his law, quote, in their hearts, causing them to walk in all his statutes, and they will not commit any sin. This is not us. We're not new covenant people. And John's not done. Just flip the page. 1 John 5.18, we know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. Are you connecting the dots? Hey, the quote born of God that quote sinneth not, and quote keepeth himself, so that the quote wicked one toucheth him not, is simply not you. Both the Old and New Covenants were written to and about the nation Israel. And the quicker you get this, the quicker you'll get to the front of the line, ahead of the curve. And there's where you can start to understand who you are in Christ. No more identity theft. Identity theft among twistianity? Hey, over the years it spread like a virus. So many, you know I'm telling the truth, so many teach that we're spiritual Israel when we're not. We're a separate entity, the church which is his body. Hence the church, the body of Christ. Three, six, nine, the goose drank wine. The monkey to the back on the streetcar line. The line broke, the monkey got choked. They all went to heaven in a little old boat. Clap, 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 clap. 
Israel's old covenant was about the law, and Israel's new covenant is about the law. You are not under the law. You never will be under the law. Israel's old covenant was about the law written on tablets, and their new covenant is going to be about the law written in their hearts. This is simple Bible. No twistianity involved. It's a truth you can stand firmly on, a truth rarely taught in denominational settings. This is connecting the dots. This is rightly dividing the word of truth. There is no church, the body of Christ, prior to the death of Christ. The church, the body of Christ, is a term only found in Pauline doctrine, only found in the epistles of Paul. Why? Because the church, the body of Christ, was a mystery not revealed prior to the Lord Jesus Christ coming to the apostle Paul and revealing to him Ephesians 3, 8, the unsearchable riches of Christ. Something else rarely taught on is there are 613 points of law. 613 laws, and we can't even recite the Ten Commandments without a list in front of us, so why would we dare think that this is speaking about us? Because that's what tradition taught us. Tradition taught it, and we've been parroting tradition all these years. Listen, for me to 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 even recite the Ten Commandments, I would have to study and put them to memory. But the Bible is clear. Those who get the New Covenant will have all 613 laws in their mind and hearts. What need will they have for study? They won't. So let's stop playing church and get real for a change. Today, the, quote, fellowship of the mystery, that's what we have. The fellowship of the mystery that we have has nothing to do, listen, nothing to do with Israel's old or new covenant and is why we still sin. We do not walk perfectly in his laws and statutes and often fall short and fail to miss the mark no matter how hard we try. Our best day is still not good enough and the reason this doesn't fit you or anyone you know is because it's not about you or anyone you know. This is about Israel and as John said, they will quote, not commit sin because they quote, cannot sin. They are the quote, born of God, born again. Israel of the new covenant, and that's not us. According to the old covenant, God was the law giver. According to the new covenant, Christ was the law keeper. The mystery of Christ, Christ is the law remover, Colossians 2.14. These are different, not the same. So, so this brings us to this question. Just why is it that so many make the claim that they're a new covenant Christian? After you hear things so often and for so long, you begin to repeat them. We are not the new covenant born again bride of Christ. Listen, the truth will change everything you thought you knew. The Bible's not confusing. It's man's private interpretation we gotta watch out for. You see, it's easier to fool people than to convince them they've been fooled. As said by Mark Twain. If the Bible says we're the new creature, and the new creature makes no distinction between Jew or Gentile, Galatians 3.28, now think about this, and the new covenant is promised to the house of Israel and the house of Judah, which is obviously made up of Jews, how can the new covenant have anything to do with us? Galatians 3.28, there's no distinction. Yet the new covenant makes a distinction. It's for the house of Israel and the house of Judah. That's not the church, the body of Christ. What some fail to realize, the new covenant is a law covenant. Hebrews 8.10 At present, and according to our dispensation, the law is not of faith. Galatians 3.12 And whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Romans 14.23 The Apostle James tells the New Covenant 12 tribes of Israel that faith without works is dead. They, unlike their fathers, will continue in the New Covenant law and work righteousness because God is going to supernaturally cause them to, quote, walk in his statutes 
and keep his judgments and do them. Ezekiel 36, 26, and 27. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh, and I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. However, under the old covenant, their fathers failed. Hebrews 8, 9. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. That's Hebrews chapter 8. Just watch the dots connect. It ain't no way around it, we just trying to connect the dots. Here for the inspiration, we just trying to connect the dots. Trying to connect the dots, put a network in every day. You see, now that we've established that the Old and the New Covenant are both for the nation Israel, where does that leave us? If the Old Covenant, past, was how God blessed through Israel, and the New Covenant, future, is how God will bless through Israel, how are we blessed today considering Israel, Romans 11.11, have fallen? Well, I've got good news. Our blessings are found in what the Bible calls the fellowship of the mystery. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 9. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. And if you back up and look at verses 2 to 4, we read, If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to youward, this is the words of Paul, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby, when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. You see, today we are not blessed with Israel's earthly blessings, but rather something far greater. We've been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Ephesians 1.3 Old covenant was for Israel in time past, new covenant for Israel in time future, the mystery of Christ for us today, for us in time present. Ignoring these distinct ways God chose to bless humanity has caused great division and great confusion. Today, the three have been reduced down to only two. Most see the distinction between Old and New Covenant, but fail to see the fellowship of the mystery, which is the mystery of Christ. Colossians 4.3, Praying also for us that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ for which I am also in bonds. Paul was chained and imprisoned for preaching this mystery of Christ. Romans 16.25, Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. To find our truth, one simple exercise is to compare the verses. Compare Israel's New Testament news with our mystery news. Matthew twenty six twenty eight. This is to Israel. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. In contrast, listen, 1 Timothy 2, 5 and 6. This is to us, the church to the body of Christ. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Did you catch that? Matthew twenty six twenty eight. the blood was shed for many, but the good news that was revealed to the Apostle Paul, Christ gave himself a ransom for all, not many, and it was to be testified in due time. This was the due time. The Apostle Paul is our due time testifier. Israel's New Testament promises the remissions of sins for many, while in contrast, our mystery promises a ransom for all. Many and all are not the same. And when you rightly divide the word of truth, you can see this too. Blend it together, you'll miss it. You'll never see it. Israel's new covenant includes a promise to take away their sins in the future. Look at Romans chapter 11, verses 26 and 27. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, There shall come out of Sion the Deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. Now compare that to Second Corinthians 5.19. God was in Christ, 
reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. When we let logic carry the day, good old-fashioned God-given common sense, hey, it becomes clear that if there are no sins being imputed, then there are no sins to take away when the Deliverer shall come out of Zion. When we rightly divide the word of truth, we allow Israel to be the recipients of their new covenant. The world being reconciled and our sins no longer being counted against us, 2 Corinthians 5.19, was mystery information not known prior to Paul receiving it from Christ. We are complete now, Colossians 2.10, and have already received our atonement, Romans 5.11. Whereas Israel will not receive their day of atonement until their kingdom comes and Christ returns. The Old Covenant has passed and the New Covenant is future, but what we're interested in is what's going on now with the church, the body of Christ. Failure to rightly divide the word of truth and see these divisions has led many to stake their claim on someone else's blessings and has resulted in them having a weak and beggarly prayer life, praying for things never promised to them. Sadly, this has resulted in some giving up on prayer and others giving up on God altogether. We are not New Covenant. Why not? We don't fit. Under their New Covenant, they will not need anyone to teach them anything. Now this is the real anointing of the Holy Ghost. Not the counterfeit anointing we hear of today. No, no, this is the real thing here. God will supernaturally teach them all things. That's why we can plainly read in 1 John 2.27, But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things. Clearly, this is not instructions to you or I. The church which is his body needs teachers. We see that in Ephesians 4, 11, and 12. There we're told that the reason we need teachers today is, quote, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. You see the difference between the body of Christ and the house of Israel? Those new covenant recipients, the house of Israel and the house of Judah, as we just read, they're not going to need any man to teach them anything. 1 John 2.27 So just use a little reasoning here. Without doubt, we know for certain that we're not living during the new covenant times. It's tradition, and it sounds good. Hey, we don't need anyone to teach us. We've just got this special anointing. Hey, it sounds good. It's tradition. We've parroted it too long. We can do better. The writer of the book of Hebrews is quoting here in verse 11, quoting from the great prophet Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 34. And look what we learn in the next two verses. Hebrews 8, verses 12 and 13. Listen. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. In that he saith, A new covenant he hath made the first old, now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. Aha! You see, this alone, this alone, lets us know that we are not new covenant people standing on new covenant ground. If you didn't hear anything else I said today, wouldn't matter. You don't have to. This, all by itself, disqualifies us. The New Covenant people here are still in their iniquity and have not yet been forgiven of all trespasses. And it's why the Lord said, I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. This is future language, not present tense. I will be merciful. I will remember their sins no more. That's future. This a reference to the Acts 3.19, blotting out of their sins. But hey, we have it now. We're not waiting for it. We're standing in grace right now, Romans 5, 2, and not hoping to the end to receive it, 1 Peter 1, 13. You see, if you just slow down a bit, back up, start comparing verses to verses, you'll begin to see the differences. You'll begin to recognize your need to obey the Lord and start rightly dividing the word of truth. Hey, it's a hard pill to swallow. The truth is like that sometimes. I was in this struggling along for many years before recognizing this myself. Under Israel's new covenant, they're promised a supernatural Holy Ghost unction. Look at 1 John chapter 2. 1 John 2.20 But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. Question. 
Do we know all things? I don't. Still learning. Thank God for His grace. Thank God for His mercy. It's obvious that we do not know all things. We haven't arrived yet. Therefore, we must study. We must become workmen. 2 Timothy 2.15 And Philippians 4.9 says, Those things which ye have both learned and received. Did you get that? There's some learning going on. We've got some learning to do. We're the church, the body of Christ. We're not Israel, and we don't have their new covenant. We don't have the supernatural Holy Ghost unction that would take away our need for studying, our need for learning. And look at 2 Timothy 3.14. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned, and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Body of Christ, we're learning, we're growing, we're studying. Now I know some are merely actors, and they're over here in the wrong books, acting as thieves and stealing Israel's promises, and they're claiming that they have this supernatural unction from the Holy Ghost. No need to study. Well, this is good for the lazy, but it's simply not true. It's not for us today. This is still yet in future, and it's for Israel. Further evidence of this, look at Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 7. Here, Paul writes, Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Now, wait a minute. So is it consider what Paul said for understanding in all things? Or is it 1 John 2.20, an unction from the Holy Ghost for an understanding in all things? Can't be both to the same people. That would go against the law of non-contradiction. If we were New Covenant people, we would have no need to consider what Paul says. We would First John 2.20 have an unction from the Holy Ghost and would know all things and have no need that any man teach us. First John 2.27 Our fellowship of the mystery is not old or new, not old or New Covenant prophecy, but rather the mystery of Christ. This should be starting to make a little sense to you. If not, we have more material at truthtimeradio.com, and we have a toll-free number listed there as well. If you have any questions about this or any other teaching, please feel free to give us a call. With an open Bible, we'll look into it. We'll compare verses and see what God is saying to us today, we who are members of His church, the body of Christ. In closing, consider this. Hebrews 8, 7 speaks of the new covenant that God will make with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. And as a part of this covenant, there'll come a change in the law. Hebrews seven twelve: For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. However, we are told that we were never under the law. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Romans 6.14 It is impossible for the book of Hebrews and the book of Romans to be speaking to the same people. Listen, if the new covenant people get their law changed, but we were never under the law, we simply cannot be the new covenant people. If we're dead to the law, Romans 7.4, there is no law to change. Remember, You only get two educations, the one you're given and the one you give yourself.